audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. One of the characteristics of the Old Covenant was that God was only accessible through mediators, operating mainly within a priestly system. And the people preferred it this way because they feared the presence of God. At Mount Sinai, as the law was being given, the people were so afraid that they kept their distance from God. They said to Moses, You speak with us and we'll hear you, but don't let God speak to us because we will die. The Old Covenant then was very much a second-hand religion. What little closeness to God there was under that system, with few exceptions, was confined to the tribe of Levi. Even then, when the high priest went into the holiest place once a year, the people stood outside in fear and trepidation, waiting for him to come out. They knew that if one prescribed duty was not carried out correctly, he would be struck dead and they would experience his holy indignation. The presence of God was dreaded. Thankfully, things are much better under the new covenant. In contrast to that old fear-based arrangement, we now have incredible intimacy with the Father. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage, says Paul, again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Under the new covenant, we are urged to come boldly before God. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And thanks for joining us. Phil here along with author and pastor Ken Legg. And this week we've been looking at the subject of hearing God's voice. Does he really speak to us individually? And how can we know his will for our lives? All very practical questions. Ken, as I was just listening to you contrasting between life under the old covenant and that under the new covenant that we're under now, I'm so glad that we are (laughs) where we are now. Um, You used a phrase just then called second-hand religion, that the old covenant was second-hand religion. What do you mean by that? Well, of course, I'm referring to this whole system of approach to God under the old covenant, which was that the ordinary person couldn't approach him directly. It could only come through a human mediator. Of course, that's all changed under the new covenant. Mm. God intends for us to enjoy an intimacy with him, which was unknown during the years of the old covenant. The removal of fear that we spoke about just there earlier on there was only one essential requisite for this. You know, in order for us to know intimacy, we've got to be free of that fear. Mm. But another necessity was the bringing to an end of the role of human mediators. We now enjoy the priesthood of all believers And that's a distinct feature of the new covenant. So we can go directly to God ourselves. We don't have to go through somebody else. Absolutely correct, Phil. No (laughs) go-betweens. All have equal access to God. So the two-tier system, if you like, which characterized the old dispensation has been done away with. There's no longer a them and us dichotomy consisting of one group of people that has direct contact with God and another group that doesn't. And that's a really important thing to remember when you're struggling with this question of hearing the voice or hearing the will of God, knowing what he wants us to do, because we can go to him directly. Well, thankfully, that's all changed now, Phil, under the new covenant. You remember one of the promises that God said under the new covenant was this, none of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. So now we all stand on equal ground before God. It's a pretty radical thought because a a lot of believers would feel, you know, that their pastor or some other person who's been a Christian for a long time is somehow more holy, more, you know, has more access to God, hears God's voice more. But we all have equal access to God. Uh, That's why I love that verse. You know, none of them should say, know the Lord. None of them should teach his neighbor. This is how you know God. We know him, you don't. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) It's pretty amazing that some people seem to have this old covenant thinking. The old covenant's been gone and buried for a long, long time. We're in the new covenant age now, but yet we still have these unappointed mediators, if you like. Yep, there are no favorites in God's family who have a special hotline, if you like, to heaven. (laughs) Um, I know as a pastor, sometimes people regard leaders, as you say, as being privy to the mind of God. Uh, it's not uncommon to be asked, Pastor, what should I do in this situation? Or, or, Pastor, what do you think God's saying to me here? But That's not a bad question to ask, surely. No, it's not. But I think um, what it does is it keeps people immature and it keeps them in this second-hand religion sort of phase 
where they're going to God through a mediator, thinking that God couldn't speak to them, but he speaks to me. Mm. So I often say people like that, well, why would God tell me his will for your life? Why wouldn't he tell you? Mm. It doesn't make any sense. So that way, you know, it encourages people to learn to hear the voice of God for themselves. I guess it's kind of similar to a child and giving them room to find the answers to questions themselves, to make their own decisions, even if it's only little things to start with, where they'll often come to you and say, oh, how do I do this or how do I do that or where do I find this or that? Yeah. And I know with my own children, one of our kids in particular, I will say to her, you try and work it out. You go and find a solution for that. And often it's really simple stuff. And she's a little bit shy sometimes. And we're like that with God. We're unsure. We'll go to him yeah. and, or we'll go to someone who we see has this answers supposedly and ask them what do you think God should do this or that rather than wanting to do it ourselves because we've got to stretch ourselves don't we yeah that's right and, and in fact you know even ourselves as adults you're relating that to your child I, I was in a situation recently where I'm trying to work something out on my computer you know and uh, I got stuck so I went to someone an 11 year old <laughs> they seem to know. It's <laughs> yes, all right, they're right as well. But I went to them and said, you know, look, I'm having trouble working this out. And, and I was hoping he'd tell me what to do. But he said, oh, you'll work it out. You'll work it out. And basically sent me back to the computer saying, look, you know, if you keep on running to people asking, you'll never find yeah. out yourself. You it's know? the same thing with God's will, isn't it? Yeah. Finding out. And, and learning to hear his voice as well, you know. Do you think we've encouraged this idea that hearing the voice of God is kind of rare or so difficult that, you know, we need to seek the help of somebody who's supposedly closer to God? Yeah, I think so, Phil. Um, but hearing the voice of the shepherd is meant to be the norm for the Christian life. You know, mm. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And then he wanted to say, and I know them and they follow me. So not only do we hear his voice, but we also know his voice. I think that's a very important distinction because, you know, Jesus went on to say that his sheep would not only hear his voice, but they would know his voice. We know his voice because we know his character. That's the thing. Uh, The sound of a person's voice will be consistent with their character. That's why, you know, we're startled when they speak in a way that is inconsistent with who they are. Uh, We cannot know God's voice then if we're unclear about his character. Again, it gets back to this whole thing of we need to have a relationship with him if we're going to know his will, doesn't it? Yeah, and of course to know him in the word. I mean, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. So when the shepherd's voice is harsh and condemning, then we know that's not his voice Yeah, because he's a good shepherd. Um, You know, in the West, uh, a shepherd drives his sheep, whereas in Israel, as you know, sheep were led by the shepherd. And this is the model that Jesus was using and that he had in mind when he was teaching us about his relationship with him. Um, In biblical times, sometimes different shepherds would come together with their flocks and keep them all in one fold overnight. Now, the sheep from the various flocks would get hopelessly mixed up with each other and uh, uh, maybe an onlooker would just say, well, how on earth are they going to unravel that mess You know, of, of sheep? But in the morning, the shepherds would each go their own way and they would call out to their sheep, and amazingly, the sheep would recognize the voice of their own shepherd and follow him in a long, straight line. That's amazing. Yeah, and Phil, but what it goes on to prove or demonstrate or illustrate, if you like, is this point, that the reason some Christians fail to hear the voice of God is that they've not learned the truth about his character. Once we know his character, we'll begin to recognize his voice more clearly. I think there's a big difference with us today to when the disciples were on earth and Jesus was on earth with them. He physically was there with them. We don't have Jesus physically here with us. But, of course, we do have the presence of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and everybody has that same spirit. So really it is a level playing field, isn't it? It is, and that is the distinctive thing of the new covenant is that we are now indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Mm. You know, under the old covenant, the Holy Spirit would come upon his people for special functions or special you know times emergency situations if you like but thankfully under the new covenant we're indwelt by the holy spirit you know where we are god is so where god is we are and uh, we don't come to him for a special word he's in us and and i think we need to kind of um, uh, make that transition from old covenant thinking to new covenant thinking Helpful advice on hearing God's voice, and we'll have more for you tomorrow. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. 
for books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.